Okay, today we're going to, to uh, learn about Thomas Paine's Common Sense. This is section 5 of E Pluribus Unum. Remember, that's how we went from many to one. And don't forget that the Enlightenment brought about a lot of philosophy, a lot of people thinking and talking about ideas about of what freedom should be and how that freedom should be handled in the government. Thomas Paine will talk about that. So get your papers ready. Okay, now let's think about, let's do a little background before we get into Thomas Paine himself and common sense. Let's talk about the fact that at the time Thomas Paine comes onto the scene, the British people live in what we call America, the United States of America. So they were British. This was, they weren't, this wasn't just like, oh, well, they're over there, we're over here. They were loyal to the king and the family. The British love of the royal family is, an, is a really old love, and it's always been a strong value that all British are taught from a very young age, even now. And that's a very difficult emotion to break. When I stand up to pledge to the flag, that's a, an extreme emotion of pride and of knowledge of where I come from. And so if someone asked me to stop doing that, it would be a very difficult emotion for me to work through. They'd have to have a very good reason. Um, the American colonists knew that the British government also had already very cruelly put down a rebellion in Ireland. So not only they have they loved their mom for a long time, they were a bit afraid of her too because they really did massacre a lot of Irish over the fact that the Irish were trying to re uh, rebel. Then... Even though there were taxes, and they were really angry about not having the voice to, against these taxes in Parliament, they still in America made more money than the people who actually lived in Great Britain, in England. Okay? So, what could possibly convince an average American to choose independence over loyalty? Let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is where Thomas Paine comes in. Thomas Paine is an Englishman who comes to the, the colonies and writes a pamphlet, a really long essay called Common Sense, and it sold like hotcakes. People really wanted to read this. Um, of course, he was in Philadelphia where he published it. And of course, remember, Philadelphia is that hotbed of Enlightenment thinking. He had sold 120,000 copies by April of 1776. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot to us, but ladies and gentlemen, that's by word of mouth. They didn't have TVs or internet or phones. It was from hand to, to one hand to the next hand to the next hand. You have to go get a copy of this. That 30-page pamphlet can be boiled down to two main ideas that are important to us. One, Thomas Paine said that we as a people had to have independence. It needed to have an independent government. That is where our independence from Britain. Then the second part that comes in is that not only must we be independent from Great Britain, we must form a new government that was a democratic republic, not based on a monarchy, not based on a king. We needed to have something that represented the people. He used plain language in his writing. He used Bible stories and verses to give his ideas credibility because he knew people knew the Bible very well. Remember, that's how they're educated. And he referred to King George III as the devil, among other things. People ate his ideas up and decided that, you know, maybe independence and being a patriot was a better idea than being a loyalist who was being taken advantage of. Now, there were those who saw Paine's ideas as being too radical. You know, his first point that Americans must declare independence was embraced by many. Many of the people agreed that we must declare independence. But the second point about having a democratic republic, which meant a government run by voting, essentially, was seen as, well, crazy. Uh, people like Thomas Jefferson and John Adams thought his ideas were too extreme when it came to establishing government. Basically, the idea being that the common person didn't know enough to be trusted, and by common person I actually mean common man, didn't know enough to be trusted with a vote and to be trusted with the idea of understanding how a, a government should be run. They were elitist. 
they were kind of like intellectual snobs when it came to that. Payne got around some of this by publishing his work anonymously. And of course, everyone, John Adams was considered a radical. So a lot of people thought that John Adams, Adams had written that work, but John Adams denied it pretty strongly. So Thomas Paine's ideas were talked about, they were read about, and people embraced not only the first idea, but strongly embraced the first idea that we must be independent, but they also started to embrace the second one. That not only must we be independent, but we need to consider having our own government that wasn't based on a monarchy or a king. Now, Payne's ideas do went out like I just said. Um, when you think about some serious points that Payne's Common Sense, and that's a copy of Common Sense of the cover of it. That's a picture of the cover of Common Sense. Um, one of the things that he asked the colonists to seriously can think about as they considered independence was, how did it make any sense that a tiny island like England was ruling a huge continent or even had any way of understanding what needed to happen on that huge continent? Furthermore, he pointed out that how could the colonists ask for foreign aid, like from France or Spain, and relate, remain loyal to King George III? Remember, England's got problems with both France and Spain. The next question he asks is, how much abuse can we take? How much are we going to put up with? By the summer of 1776, the colonists took up a stand, and they sent King George III a little breakup letter we like to call the Declaration of Independence. That comes tomorrow. All right, you know what to do. Collaborate, question, answer.